Welcome everyone to the PEHP webinar on what's your meal plan. My name is Jill Bryan and I am a registered dietitian and wellness specialist with PEHP. So thank you for joining me today. The webinar today will focus on how you can take steps to plan and prepare healthy meals for either you or your entire family. Just to let you know, this webinar is being recorded and depending on the amount of time, I will open up the chat feature for uh, questions at the end of the webinar. So thank you again and let's get started. So meal planning sometimes when you hear that word might bring on a heavy sigh of dread. However, there is good news. Meal planning doesn't have to take a lot of time and spending a little bit of time really is worth it. So I've listed some of the health benefits, some of the benefits that go along with meal planning. So I find that it can reduce a lot of stress. If you know what you're going to eat in the evening or for lunch or for breakfast, however much meal planning you want to do, it can really help reduce a lot of stress. It can also save a lot of money by not having to make several trips to the grocery store throughout the week or having to stop and get fast food several nights also. I think one of the greatest benefits is it can help you meet your nutritional needs. So if you take a little bit of time and plan out balanced meals, it can help you meet the nutrients that your body needs to help you stay healthy. If you're trying to lose weight or maintain your weight, planning meals and knowing how much to eat is also a great way to manage your caloric intake. Um, when you do a little bit of meal planning, um, it also helps you fit in things like fruits and veggies and whole grains that you might not have on hand if you're just kind of in a rush to eat whatever you can find or if you're stopping at home to um, just to stop on your way home from work to pick up something. So as we get started with any type of planning, I think it's a good idea to be realistic about what's going on in your life. So stop and just I have a few questions that I would like you to to ponder as we get started on this. So the first one is what's going on right now and then what do you think is realistic for you in regarding meal time? Do you typically sit and eat in front of the TV? Are you distracted when you're eating? Do you eat your lunch maybe at your desk at work? Do you have one job right now? Do you have two jobs? Do you feel like you're a taxi driver for your kids? Um, are you eating in the car quite often as you're driving your kids around or as you're traveling to and from work each day? And then also how often are you eating out each night? Sometimes it's realistic to know that maybe you do need to plan to eat out a couple times a week and that's fine also but just be realistic about what your meal times are going to look like and if you do need to eat out maybe spend a little bit of time and figure out how that can plan into a healthy balanced meal or take a little bit of time and we'll go through how to make your own prepared frozen meals that you could take with you so that you can cut back on how many times you need to eat out a little bit but as you ask yourselves a few of these yourself a few of these questions to know where you're at right now. Once you know what your meal times are going to look like, then you can take a little bit of time, do some brainstorming to simplify and strategize how to make simple, healthy meals and how that can work best for you. So I also want you to think about what are your current health goals? Where are you are? Where are you right now? And where would you like to be? So if you feel like you're doing OK, but you want to add a few other things in, um, that's fine. Maybe you're just starting fresh. Maybe you're an expert already at meal planning. So just maybe think about where you are and where you want to be. But the goal of this as we finish this, hopefully you'll get some good ideas on how you can meal plan. But I also want you to think about one to two realistic changes that you can implement. So maybe you're going to try and add a salad to your meal at least once a week. Maybe make a goal to increase fruits and vegetable intake to at least three servings per day. If you're a little bit low with that right now, maybe make a goal to have an, a meatless meal once per week. And I'll go through some ideas on how you can incorporate that into your meal planning. If you find that you're you are eating out a lot, so I would say five times or more per week is quite a bit. So maybe make it a goal to cut back and only eat out 
three times a week and then see if you can find a way to add fish or some type of a seafood to get some good omega-3 fatty acids into your diet at least once a week. So there's lots of good ideas. These are just some ideas. Maybe you want to try and add more dark greens like a green salad or broccoli or spinach um, into your meal planning as well. So just maybe be thinking about that, how you can really start right now by making a couple of realistic changes and adding that into your meal plan. So there are six main steps to meal planning. And so I'm going to go through each of these steps. So feel free to take notes. And then if you have any additional questions, hopefully have a little bit of time at the end that you can ask your questions. So step one is to know the key concepts of a healthy diet. So we're not going to go through a whole nutrition class today, but I just wanted to point out kind of the five main food groups. And so when you're looking at planning your meals, I want you to keep these groups in mind and then see how you can incorporate a lot of these healthier ideas. So with fruits and veggies, um, you should be having at least half your plate fruits and vegetables at each meal. I know that's a little bit difficult, especially at breakfast, but there are some simple ways to add fruits. I would say for sure veggies. If you're having omelets, you can easily add some cut up tomatoes or onions, some of those types of things. A lot of people are doing avocado toast, so you can do that as well. If you like smoothies or fresh fruit, um, just try and get those in there. Whole grains are great. And so as you're planning your meals, I usually try and recommend that at least half of the grains that you eat each day should be a whole grain. With all of your dairy options, the current recommendation is to do either a low fat or a fat free. If you're doing a dairy alternative, then I would recommend selecting those options that do not have added sugar or an added sweetener to those. Same things with if you're doing cheese, um, there are some low fat cheese options. Um, I'll give some other recommendations. I'm not a huge fan of low fat cheese. Um, with lean protein, with your proteins, one great recommendation is to add a lot of variety to the different types of proteins that you're eating. So do chicken and turkey, try seafood, nuts, beans are great options as well. So just adding variety as you're planning out your meals throughout the week and then trying to incorporate healthy oils. So if recipes that you're looking at for your meal plans call for solid fats like butter, see if the plan will allow you to add a healthy oil instead. So just keep these key concepts in mind as your, I would say would be the first step when you're starting at looking your, at your meal plans. So these are just a few suggestions, some other tips to how to get a little bit more veggies in as you're thinking about your meals for the week. So a lot of times people are really, really low in the amount of vegetables that they eat in their diet. So if you can add a little bit of excitement to what you're doing, make them a little bit more appealing either for you, your family, I think especially for kids, there's a lot of ways to sneak in veggies to try and get your intake up just a little bit. So just a few ideas here. Um, you can mix shredded red cabbage with diced cranberry apples and add a little bit of a low fat poppy seed dressing is a really great. It has a lot of good flavors. Saute zucchini with summertime right now. We have a lot of zucchini, especially if you're growing a garden. So you can saute zucchini with a little bit of olive oil and some fresh basil, maybe top it with some toasted walnuts. Um, different ways to cook some green beans. And then one thing I find with people is a lot of times they say they don't like a certain type of veggies. Maybe they'll say, I just hate broccoli. And maybe it's because of the way the vegetable is being prepared. So maybe you, you hate broccoli raw, but maybe you would like it better if it was steamed. Or if you haven't ever tried roasting vegetables, it actually gives it a totally different texture and flavor. So um, I will send out, hopefully you can get a copy of these slides and I have a few links in here on how to try some different things or you can just search them up as well. But I would definitely recommend trying roasting veggies. It's an easy, clean, simple way to prepare your veggies. Um, just some other ideas here. I'll let you read through some of these so we don't spend too much time on just the veggie part. 
but there are tons of tips and ideas and fun ways so you could do a search on the internet for this as well as if you find that you struggle getting veggies into your diet. So the second step of the meal planning process is to take inventory of what you have on what you have on hand. So maybe you just open up your pantry. What's in your pantry right now? Maybe look in your freezer. I think a lot of us stock um, different types of food items that we use regularly, and that can really help simplify the meal planning process and also help avoid a lot of waste if if you're using what you have on hand so it doesn't expire. So start slowly, I would say, if you open up your pantry, you don't have anything in there, just try picking up a few extra items each week, especially if things are on sale that you know you're going to be using a lot, which is one of the great benefits of meal planning. You know what you're going to need, and if it's a recipe that you really like or your family enjoys, then it's something you're going to be preparing quite often, slowly build up an inventory of those items. So kind of the steps here, check your refrigerator in your pantry to see what you already have available. I would say take a little bit of time to organize and put things into groups, especially in your pantry. So you see quickly what, maybe what types of grains you have, what if you're gonna make things with broth or with a soup, what do you have? And then come up with a way to rotate that food as well. So I think the most common thing is to do the first in, first out. So when you buy new items, make sure you're rotating those to the back of your pantry and not just putting them right in the front. Otherwise, you're going to find if you pull something out, it may be expired or too old to use. So come up with a rotation system that's going to work well for you. So not only in your pantry, but I would say your freezer and your refrigerator as well. A lot of recipes call for different types of spices. Spices can be expensive and they do go bad after several years. So take inventory of what spices you have as well. So you avoid, avoid buying too much that you're not going to use and then you end up just wasting those. So these are some suggestions on just some simple things that I would recommend that you slowly stock up on to have in your pantry but it really depends on what you're going to be cooking and what your family enjoys but these things tend to store well and can be used in a variety of recipes so it's easy if you have these on hand to quickly throw something together even if you might not have something planned that evening so so step three is to research meals and snack ideas. And I would say as a registered dietitian, the most common question or request that I have is for people to want me to send them ideas for recipes. And I think as a mom and someone that prepares the food in my home as well, it's hard to find things and we want new ideas on what to cook. So I provided, there's lots of great websites and I think that's one of the best things about the internet is that we can go online and we can find a lot of different new simple recipes that we can try out. So the first thing I would suggest is to look at the recipes and the cookbooks if you still have those at your home and see what you have and then make a realistic thing, idea or decision on are you actually using any of these? Or are they just taking up space and maybe cluttering up your kitchen? So if you are using them, Awesome, if you're not, maybe just pull out the recipes that you do use and then donate the books. But come up with a way that you can organize the recipes that you're going to be using. Either do those online, if you're someone that likes to print them out, maybe put them in a binder and organize them by whatever method's going to work best for you. So maybe you're going to do it by breakfast, lunch, meals, maybe you wanna do it by soups or salads whatever you feel is going to work best for you. But I, if you want to take note of some of these, uh, the I use the Eating Well website quite often and Cooking Light. Those are probably two of my favorite uh, websites to use for recipes. So I mentioned go through your recipes that you currently have, go through your cookbooks, and then really it, it'll help simplify the meal planning process and how you stay organized if you really only keep the things that you're using. Uh, mentioned utilize the internet. 
I like to try at least one new recipe per week. I do like to try and keep recipes fairly simple because I don't want to spend a lot of money on new ingredients and especially new spices if it's something that I don't like or my family's not going to like. So spend a little bit of time, find some new recipe ideas, or maybe talk to friends or coworkers or family members and get ideas of recipes that their families really enjoy that they've tried, and then maybe swap those with each other. The other thing that I really like to use is um, allrecipes.com. So on this website, this is what it looks like, and they actually have a way where you, you can search for recipes, but you can specify which specific ingredients you want to have in the recipe. So if you go through your pantry and your fridge and your freezer and you see, okay, there's certain things that I need to use up that are going to go bad in the next week or two, you can include those specific ingredients here. If there's certain things your family does not like, certain ingredients, you can put those on the exclude ingredient list or if you have an allergy, and then you can really narrow down the recipes instead of looking through, say, hundreds and hundreds of recipes, you can make it very specific. So if you haven't tried this website before, I think this is a great resource that can simplify the process of looking for recipes that are going to work for your family. So if your time is limited, there are some other websites that work really well and you can actually search for fast, healthy recipes. So Cooking Light and Eating Well, they both offer that as an option when you're searching for recipes. So I like, I don't, I love to cook, but sometimes I don't have a ton of time. I do want most of my recipes to be include healthy options. So I'm not having to make a lot of substitutes on my own, but I also like, recipes that don't have tons and tons of ingredients so I don't have to spend a lot of money on things that we may not like. So <clears throat> there's lots of options. Um, you can search on the internet, just search for super fast cooking, five ingredient cookbooks, five ingredient weeknight dinner recipes, and there's a lot of options so that you're you're not spending a lot of time or money on some of your ideas for your meal planning. So step four is you're now ready to start your plan. So what I recommend is sitting down and planning your meals and lunches for at least one week. If you're new to meal planning, say so don't overwhelm yourself once you get a little bit better out of it, at it. I actually like to sit down and plan for the whole month. So I know what my month looks like and I can rotate things in and out. But I think it's really important if you're gonna do it for each week is to take a look at your calendar and realize what does your week look like? If you know you're gonna be busy a couple nights of the week or you're gonna be home late from work, maybe you're going out of town, make sure you know what your schedule looks like so that your meal plan is going to work for, for what you need example of a basic way to create a schedule for meal planning and there's a lot of different ways to do this. Um, so one thing that I recommend for people is to maybe pick one day each week that is going to be based around a specific theme or a specific type of protein. I think it helps plug in the recipes and meal ideas if you have kind of a set schedule on how to do this. Um, and then you can make adjustments to this. This is just one idea on how you can make this work. A lot of times I'll tell people to do, for me on Mondays is almost, I call it a meatless Monday where we'll do something that doesn't include some type of a, an animal-based protein. So a lot of times it will be a salad where I'll put in soup and different types of things. A lot of times people do like a taco Tuesday where it's going to be some type of a, a Mexican dish. Maybe they're gonna do tacos or taco salads. But if you have a theme or a set way you're going to do this, it helps add variety throughout the week and makes it a little bit more simple as well. So some other menu ideas when you're doing this is to, which is really helpful if you're going to be planning it out for the week, which can save a lot of time, is to do double duty meals. So if you look back at your week, so if we were to look at this, once you have it planned out, once you pull your recipes and you say, okay, I have two nights this week that we're going to be having chicken in our meals, or we're going to be having beef 
or maybe we're going to be having pasta noodles twice this week, or maybe we have brown rice twice this week. When you have your whole meals planned out, you can prepare all the meat ahead of time. So if you're going to cook it one night, just double up and cook all the meat you need, that specific type of meat for all the meals that you're going to be having for that week. Same thing with rice or pasta. Um, rice actually freezes really well. So if you haven't tried freezing rice before, that can save you time, especially if you're doing brown rice, since brown rice tends to take a lot longer to cook. So I always recommend cook extra. You're already cooking. It's really not going to take much more time and then portion the sizes out. You can freeze rice in either Ziploc baggies or put it in some type of a Tupperware container and then just take it out and put it in the fridge in the morning and then you just have to reheat it to use for that meal at night. It can make the recipe a lot faster. But I think that's one of the benefits again of meal planning is to save time by seeing what you can prepare ahead of time. If you have time on the weekends or one day during the week, a lot of times I recommend prepping as much of you as as you can ahead of time, especially if you know your week is going to be really busy. That can help you stick to your meal plan a little bit better as well. So another idea is to create a basic 10 meal plan using 10 of your favorite recipes, and then you just repeat these three times during the month, and then pretty soon your whole month is filled up and you don't have to think every single day, okay, what are we gonna have to eat? Your calendar is already full. I do recommend leaving a few nights left um, for leftovers. If you're, I know some people just hate leftovers. Um, I would recommend planning that in so you don't have a lot of waste. A lot of times people will like to cook extra for dinner and then they can use that and take that for their meal. If you're still going into the office, you can take that with you. Then you don't have to go out to eat. You're kind of creating your own lunch that's already done that doesn't take any additional time or planning. If you like this idea of planning out the whole month, you can look at it. I mean, you can add variety, especially with fruits and veggies if you can with your meal if it's done for the whole month. But I think looking down, seeing that you know exactly what you're going to have really takes the stress out of planning and, and can be very helpful. So some other ideas, I would say if you're going to do leftovers or if you're going to freeze the leftovers, make sure you put them with a date. Usually leftovers, in my opinion, aren't good for more than a couple of days. If you have family members that can help and you know you're going to be home later on in the evening, I would recommend coming up with some kind of a system where your family is no, going to know what you're having for dinner and then if they're available, they can help start getting things ready as well. So try and involve whoever else is living in your home with you involved in this process. Post the menu so that you remember as well what you're having, especially if it's something you need to prepare ahead of time. Maybe you're going to use your crock pot or you're going to use um, just some other methods to help that to make the process a little bit easier in the evening. So once you have your your recipes and you have your week planned out, the next step is to make a list of what you need. This is really where it helps if you take an inventory based on what you have at home. Make sure you're using that up first and then make a list of specifically what you need to purchase at the store. Take that with you with groceries and foods being more expensive right now. Say, Look at the ads online, see if you can find any coupons or shop where there are sales for what you're going to be needing for the week since each grocery store tends to have different sell items each week. I usually recommend, so this, the last step is I would recommend is to shop strategically. So one way to save money and to avoid buying a lot of things that you don't need is to try and shop only once per week promise it will save a lot of time and money. I think we can all relate when we go into the grocery store and we're only planning on buying a couple of items and we end up leaving with lots of different things because we're wandering around the store and something happens to look good to us. So try and limit the amount of time you're shopping. One idea, if you have a list, this isn't quite as important, but you can typically find healthier options if you're just shopping the perimeter of the store. Um, so you're going to find usually your produce, your lean meats, your low fat dairy are all going to be on the outside. So, but if you have your list and you know what you're getting, I'd say stick to your list. 
Um, some other good recommendations, don't, shop, don't go to the store when you're hungry so you're not tempted to buy a lot of unhealthier options that are not on your list. And then again, take advantage of the sales to help the cost um, be a little bit less. One thing I have found, um, some people say, well, if you're only going to shop once a week, that doesn't work really well with some veggies and fruit because sometimes they don't last that long. So I usually recommend stocking up and having a good variety of frozen fruits and veggies in your freezer. They tend to be pretty inexpensive. You can get a large variety. There are so many different vegetable options now in the freezer section and they're quick and easy. You can throw them in in the bag in the microwave, steam them for a couple of minutes and they're ready to go. They don't take hardly any prep. And the other benefit is you're not going to have any waste like you would if you don't eat the fresh fruits or veggies. So watch for those. I would say when those are on sale, slowly build up a supply of those because those can work really well and help avoid extra trips to the grocery store. So some other good benefits, I think, of knowing what you're going to have throughout the week or throughout the month is learning to freeze things and using them a little bit later on. So one thing you can do to simplify your life a little bit is to try and incorporate at least one meal per week that can be enjoyed on more than one occasion. So it can either be a leftover for the next meal the next day, or you can make your own homemade freezer meal. So if you know if you're gonna be busy and you don't wanna go out to eat, then take time, make a double or double recipe of something that your family enjoys that you know will freeze well. And then all you have to do is portion them into individual portion sizes. You can buy containers easily at the store. I found some great options for freezing meal plants type things where I can put them in different sections um, at the dollar store and they work really, really well. So I can double up on things. I can put them, freeze them, and then things are ready either for me or for my kids when they come home they can just pull it out and it's very very simple and it really doesn't take a lot of extra time because you're already preparing it for that meal anyways so just a couple of tips if you are going to freeze food just for food safety is you really need to make sure you cool the foods thoroughly before freezing them so if you have something that's too thick um, you want to make sure the temperature comes down pretty quickly to avoid any food poisoning or food problems. So make sure you're freezing them in thinner containers if it's something that's going to be pretty thick. Um, remove as much air as possible. I think it works best to have mill size portion sizes that you're using to freeze things. They just unthaw a little bit better and they freeze a little bit better. If you're going to do this, make sure that you label and date all of your packages things don't last forever in the freezer as well. So you want to make sure that you're using and rotating those also. Um, and I kind of talked about this, just making sure things are single layer, they're in the coldest part of your freezer, and then just rearrange things as necessary so that things are not being wasted either. So I just want to finish up the webinar with a couple of healthy cooking tips. So if you're looking to reduce fat and calories in some of your recipes, some things that I found are pretty easy. If your recipe calls for butter, like if you're sauteing something or a lot of oil, I would just recommend either purchasing your own culinary spray bottle where you can refill it with a healthy oil, or you can also use uh, just nonstick pans, a little bit of the cooking spray, and then you don't have to add a lot of extra oil to your meals or extra fat. If you are using oils in your recipes, try and use monounsaturated fats. So olive oil, canola oil, there's avocado oil, peanut oil are all great options that are going to be a little bit healthier in your recipes. Um, you can use reduced um, cream cheese or sour cream to help limit saturated fat. Honestly, don't really like any of the lower fat cream cheese options, especially not fat free. I think it changes the texture too much. If you're going to use cream cheese, maybe just reduce the amount a little bit or try not to use it in recipes too often. If your recipes call for heavy cream or half and half, which tend to be pretty high in fat, 
you can actually replace those with one or two percent milk um, or even evaporated milk works well. Same thing with cheese. Cheese has a lot of calories and a lot of fat. A lot of people really love cheese in their recipes. So instead of just using more, I usually recommend cutting back on cheese a little bit and just picking a flavor of cheese that's going to be a little bit stronger. So instead of maybe using a mild cheddar cheese, try sharp. You'll be able to taste the flavor really well. Um, blue or feta cheese has a lot of flavor as well that you can use in recipes and that will help make your recipes a little bit healthier also. So just some other options here depending on what some of your health goals may be. Maybe use half egg whites and half whole eggs when you're baking or doing a scrambled egg or an omelet. If your recipes call for a lot of oil, you can substitute those with really any type of a fruit, a fruit puree like applesauce. You can also do a low fat plain yogurt or even pumpkin works really well depending on the recipe also. So whole grains I mentioned, there's lots of ways to get good whole grains in. Also recommend trying to add vegetables to, even if your recipe doesn't call for it, try and see if you can sneak some ways to find, to get a little bit more veggies into what you're cooking. I've listed a few of those ideas on here. Again, recommend to try and get at least half of your grains as whole grains. I've listed a lot of different options. This is one area of the grocery store that's really expanded. Whole grains tend to be just about the same price as a refined grain. So try recipes, even if the recipe calls for a refined grain, if it's white rice, you can definitely still add in a brown rice or some of these other ones as well. Um, so that's the end of the webinar. I wanna thank everyone for joining me today. Um, I will stay on for a few minutes if anyone has any questions on meal planning. Um, I would be happy to, to answer any questions. So let me turn on this chat feature if it's turned off right now. All right, so does anyone have any questions? I think the chat is on now. Let's see if I can pull that up here. All right, I'm not sure if I can get this to work or not, but I am going to end the webinar and then I'll stay on for a few minutes. So thank you again. Hopefully you're able to gain some good simple ideas on how you can meal plan. And I would recommend just sitting down. It doesn't take a lot of time, but it really will simplify the stress, I think, involved in meal planning sometimes, just knowing what you're going to have throughout the week and knowing that you have the ingredients on hand can make a big difference on having good, simple, healthy meals for you and your family. So thank you everyone again for joining me today and I will be happy to stay on and answer a few questions. So thank you.